Welcome to Hello, This is the Doomed Show. I am Richard. Folks, I have been receiving letters from a zone, a very specific zone, and um, thankfully, I can still read, and I read these letters, and they were from our very own Jeffrey. He's been trapped in the quadded zone for many, many moons. Jeffrey, can you hear me? It's a little fuzzy, um, but yes, I can hear you over the cackling and the synthesizer and <laughs> the uh, the whooshing of air. Yes, I can. Uh, Hi, Richard. Hi. Glad to be here. Folks at home, I'm going to tell you, the cackling, that's what opened this show. I took that sound by <laughs> that dude laughing for 30 minutes of the movie and just put that at the beginning. <laughs> dude, that guy's laugh is outrageous. Ooh, like it's that it's like that Japanese custom where you sit around a table and you, you force yourself to laugh until you can't stop laughing. It's like a little festival they do. <laughs> I forget what it's called, but I swear I'm not making that up. But anyway, I'm, I'm I'm remembering now that I, I meant to write down all of the lyrics to the opening theme <laughs> of this song and then perform them for oh, you here. No. <laughs> but I, I, I only wrote down one, uh, which says there's no rules in the game of fright. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> that is eerily perfect. That is exactly how it sounds. Folks, yes, we are talking about Tales from the Quadded Zone from 1987. Uh, a shot on video masterpiece from yes. uh, uh, Mr. Chester Novell Turner. Chester N. Turner. Mm -hmm. I think this is like an infamous shot on video movie. Like, this is... One of those highly sought after collectible ones. Yeah. If the trivia one, is to be believed. Well, because I mean he he pretty much reproduced them himself. So wow. it was very limited in terms of uh of, of access because unless you had one of the however many, I mean under a thousand tapes he made, you simply could not see this movie anywhere until fairly recently, uh, with the Massacre Video D V D releases. So this was uh, his follow-up to uh, Black Devil Doll from Hell. Have you seen that one? Oh, of course, yeah. Okay. Um, although I would say I've seen Black Devil Doll from Hell once. Um, I have the the, the DVD set. Um, I've seen Quad Dead Zone maybe ten times. Oh my! God. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> that that explains a little bit uh, uh, my preferences here. Although. Wow. You know, Black Devil Doll from Hell, also uh, quite the film. Um, but yes. there's something about Qua Dead that keeps me keeps me coming back. <laughs> well, you're trapped in it. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I forgot I'm trapped here. Yeah. No, I had heard about both films, uh, but this is the only one. This Tales from the Qua Dead Zone is the only one of his I've seen. And um, uh, wow. So, folks, we're trying to do another shot on video summer 
Um, th- this may be it. I don't. I know we can't top this one. Uh, but yes, yeah, so we we're gonna delve deep, and I think this might be like the first film from a black director that we've done on the show. Shame on shame on the show. Yep, you're just like the Criterion Collection. <laughs> This is our very late Juneteenth celebration. I I apologize. We will work on that because, I mean, I want to say I'm stealing this phrase from you where you've said before about mm-hmm. other films we've covered that this was a singular vision Oh yeah, from someone. This guy has a way about him and I love mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I can articulate what that way is. <laughs> We're going to try. But, it's, you know. but it's a way that is, is striking off in many different directions. Hey, it, do, all you need to know about this one, folks, is it's an anthology film and it's an hour and two minutes. If you <laughs> haven't seen it, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. I love short movies. Listeners of the show will know that uh, the shorter, the better. Yes. Um, so this is like the perfect, you know, if you could even shave that last six seconds off. <laughs> So it would just be a, a square 102 perfect. Ooh, I yeah. love it. <laughs> like, don't let that episode of Assignment about uh, the new Spiria, the, the Suspiria remake. Don't listen to that. I, I hate long <laughs> movies. What are you talking about? Uh, so I don't think there's a trailer for this film. I don't. I think he could not afford a trailer. It all all the money went into this 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 piece of art. <laughs> But you could just play a little bit of the intro song, which kind of explains it all, right? I'll drop a needle right here. Here we go. I found two things. I found a VHS tape online. I did not spend, you know, like a thousand dollars or whatever. However much this tape's going for. I saw. I saw a fact that one of them went for like three thousand dollars. Yikes! Like that's a crazy. That's amount insane. Of money. Uh, yeah. But I really want to go with the IMDb plot on this one because it's really great. <laughs> um, it goes like this. A female pirate and her companion race against their rivals to find a hidden island that contains a fabulous treasure. (laughs) Um, I believe that is the film Cutthroat Island. Yes, that is the (laughs) plot of Cutthroat Island. So um, I'm actually going to read from the good old uh, (laughs) VHSCollector.com has the, uh, the, the, the VHS tape here. It says, three tales of evil beyond belief. And on the back, it has lots of paragraphs. So here we go. <clears throat> Due to the graphic scenes of violence and language, this film is recommended for mature audiences only. Food for question mark is a tale about hunger and its effect on one poor family and one family member's solution to this devastating problem. A tale you will never forget. <laughs> True. The Brothers is a tale of hatred and revenge of supernatural proportions and laughing. Two brothers, Ted and Fred Johnson, brothers whom have hated each other from birth. Fred dies of an apparent heart attack. Ted steals his body from a funeral home to carry out a strange and bizarre deed, resulting in a chain of events that Ted could not foresee in this life or the next. Unseen Vision is a tale about Bobby, a dead little boy whom whom keeps bringing his mother strange books to read to him. Books what can't be found in this world. (laughs) (laughs) True. (laughs) <laughs> written produced and directed by chester n turner oh boy yes. yes bc video what is bc because uh, <gasps> was was it black cinema hmm, uh, i wonder what no bc idea. that's interesting i like it i don't know all right so let's jump into this i can't believe i have this many pages of notes but <laughs> i do some summarizing some 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 summarizing uh, we start with a title card that's dedicated to Chester N. Turner, Sr. Uh, this one's for my dad. Oh, man. I wish it had not been Sr. I wish he had dedicated the film to himself. That would have been amazing. <laughs> dedicated to me. <laughs> <laughs> this is an airy vision film. Um, I E-R-R-Y. believe it's supposed to be eerie, though. Wow. Eerie vision. It's an eerie. I will not spell check. I love it. This is Chester <laughs> Novel Turner's, or Novell Turner's, dot, 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 slime hand gently stroking the book 
Tales from the Quadded Zone, which is um, a book with some nice uh, gold foil on its, uh, its pages and a paper back cover that's been drawn on. Like they actually wrapped it in paper. Yeah, and drew it well, on I, fa- there. I, fa- I found out from the um, uh, the documentary, the short documentary interviews uh, on the Massacre video disc that this was just a Bible that I they was just gonna, wrapped up in paper. Yeah. I was going to assume it was a Bible, and I would have been right. Damn it. So just guess. That's great. But what i got to say here is that as a book collector, regardless of the book that you have, even if you wrap it in paper, you should not be handling it when you've got a mud mask on your hand. <laughs> I was a little disappointed that that hand didn't make a cameo later in the film. Mm. I was like, that's my main character right there. While all of this is happening, while these images are flying at you, um, the sickest keyboard in the world is dying right before our very ears. Yep. Wow, this soundtrack is amazing. I know, I know. It's so good. Um, I like desperately want somebody like Terror Vision Records to put it out. Um, they've been doing like a shot on video, you know, uh, series oh, of wow. uh, vinyl re-releases. But this one, I, I don't think that Chester and Turner like has the music. Oh, man. Um, so in he, the inter- he did the music. He did. Oh, yeah. Oh, you bet he did. Like, um, I can replicate. Because I got a drum machine and I can run it through like all these all these new fancy guitar pedals. They're just to make you sound like you're using an old tape recorder anyway. <laughs> so it True. all works out. Yeah, this opening theme is like it's an absolute sludge jam. It's from the <laughs> deepest and dankest <laughs> zone of all. I absolutely love it. This seriously sounds like tapes my friends made. My friend <laughs> Phil had uh he had a four track he brought it to uh, our friend worked at kinko's and we used to stay at kinko's all night just making zines because we were Mm -hmm. cool kids on a friday night and uh, he brought this four track and he took it out of his bag and i'm like what the fuck is that he's like oh check this out i made this song with uh toothbrushes and pots and pans (laughs) and he plays it for me and it's basically the music for this yeah beautiful it's awesome yeah I, i eventually got a four track i loved it God, it's just so beautiful. Uh, we got some rhyming monsters uh, yelling, I mean, oh, excuse me, talking over the uh, drawings. Uh, these drawings are by Shirley L. Jones, according yep. to the credits. And uh, Shirley L. Jones is uh, uh, going to be Bobby's mother. Now, was she in Black Devil Doll from Hell? I mean, she's like the, the person in it. Yeah, she's the lead. Oh, wow. So she's his muse. Pretty much, yeah. Um, she is quite the character. She uh, is, I think, a pretty cool, talented artist here. Oh, dude, um, this is amazing art. Like, she did the art here. She drew the cover um, for the film, too. And they uh, show in the documentary um, some of her art in more detail. And they show her standing next to uh, the cover that she drew. And it's gigantic. It's so big. It's like a huge you know, piece on the wall. Um, I would love to own a piece of uh, Shirley L. Jones art. Um, another funny thing about her that I learned uh, from the documentary is that she also goes by Coot. That's her name. <gasps> Coot. Coot. Yep. That's adorable. <laughs> My name's Shirley L. Jones, also known as Coot, is what she says. <laughs> she is. She seems like the most fun woman imaginable. Uh, she's just like super game and happy to be in a movie, and these movies in particular. Wow, that's amazing. I'm glad she doesn't like, uh, don't talk to me. I don't want to be remembered for this shit. That's great. Oh, no, she calls them her babies. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she does. That's awesome. Uh, so we immediately see what looks like a, a mad ball with a candle through it. Well, my friend, that is a mad ball. Yes. <laughs> hey, that's what I thought. I was like, yeah, you want to get me on board. All you got to do is put a candle in a mad ball. Or, that's uh, like a... <laughs> Have a boglin sitting next to it. That's literally my bat signal. <laughs> Just shine a light on it and Jeffrey appears. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So uh, so she's doing dishes. Bobby's mom is doing dishes. Um, and I'm immediately impressed by her giant glasses. Oh yeah. Those glasses are how I'm trying to be. Oh um, my god. And f- unfortunately, I've got a large head, so I can never find glasses that are that big. Dude, I can lose all the weight I want. But I still got a big old bobblehead. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I feel you. It's because our you. brains are so smart. 
That's it, yeah. Yeah. Um, she's talking to Bobby, her invisible son, ghost, guy, kid. Well, we're assuming that she, you know, is talking. There's a lot of clattering of dishes going on. Oh, my scene. God. Sound like, design is not this movie's strong suit. <laughs> she could just be, like, meaninglessly scatting. We wouldn't really know. Uh, she's singing Bob da dong da dang da dang da We were having a little talk about Kid Rock before we got into this year, folks, so... <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. She wrote "Ba Wada Ba" in he this told, moment. Yeah, Kid Rock culturally appropriated <laughs> it from her. Thanks a lot, dude. Wow, he, cu- he culturally appropriated the quadded zone. <laughs> well, you take something out of the quadded zone, but it takes something from you. <sighs> oh, brother. Oh, brother. When he talks to her, when when Bobby asks her to to tell her, excuse me, tell him a story. Um, she gets wind blown by a, a fan. <laughs> a, a secret, mi- a secret uh, wind blows through the room when he talks her- to her. It's so cute, and it specifically blows up her bangs and yes. her hair. Yes. Does, it looks like a mushroom cap. That's <laughs> what her hair is here. That hairstyle all over my middle school and high school. Yeah, oh yeah, it's yeah classic. Yeah. I don't even know what to call it. It's just beautiful. <laughs> oh boy. He brings her, oh, well, first of all, before he brings her the book, the book of the movie, uh, the decor in this house is <laughs> amazing. This is the 70s house you want. It's gorgeous. Now, was this made before, like years before it was released? Um, I don't believe Cause, so. Because like, she seems like she's in the 80s style, but the guys in the next story, they seem like out of time like they seem like late 70s looking dudes like at least mid to late 70s i'm not sure weird yeah i don't think i don't think it was wow i think it was made pretty much when it when it was released nice but yeah this house oh every room has just beautiful secrets to unfurl just like look up 70s decor and it's just Mm -hmm. all over this shit oh my god it was a joy joy for my eyes we have um, a lot of special effects going on in this sequence. Uh, mostly by that I mean strings have been attached to things. Yes. And moved around like a mug and some plants <laughs> and uh, a, cu- a couch cushion because uh, Bobby sits down on it, his ghost and we see the indentations because he's got a very heavy ass for a kid. Uh, <laughs> my uh, favorite, My favorite is the special effect of filming nothing. <laughs> to indicate ghost oh man that's great i mean it works doesn't it hey, you know, I, a ghost I'm haunted, there. yeah <laughs> that's the language of film buddy <laughs> so he brings her the the book of the movie brings her the tales from the quad ed zone so you got your your you're referencing the thing that's the thing in the thing mm-hmm. yeah and but she uh reads she reads the first story which apparently <laughs> is called food for question mark i didn't know until i like read the back of the vhs to you guys yeah they just refer to it as food four in the film <laughs> food four all right like food food four dot 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 yeah uh this is this is the the hungry family i dare say they're hangry because uh, <laughs> uh, so angry dinner time is important and according to the narration um they're they're very poor and th- that's why dinner is so important because they're so hungry Mm-hmm. I mean, you can tell that they're hungry because uh, mom's eyebrows are positively starving. <laughs> this is the white people in the movie. <laughs> and uh, I, I love this family. They're all talking at once. Um, I believe the narrator is also talking while they're all talking around the dinner table. And the score is going crazy at the same time, too. So there's just, there's a war for uh, uh, audio real estate going does, on. Does the DVD have subtitles? Oh, of course not, no. <laughs> There'd just be lots of question marks. Like, I don't know. That's more than I can tell. Dialogue for question mark? Dad, Dad rings the bell. He's a little dinner bell there, and they all go quiet. Okay, but the most important detail here is that the dinner bell has a teddy bear on top of it. Oh, I thought it was. I, why do I keep thinking it was a Santa Claus bell? No, yes, it has a freaking teddy bear. It's a little white porcelain bell with a porcelain teddy bear on top. Yep. It's adorable. Um, he says grace, and he says, "You know, Lord, thank you for this meal, even though there's eight of us at the table and only food for four. Mm-hmm. And he he makes them wait for the bell before they can dive in. It's like 
you know, these people like desperately scrambling for these four sandwiches. Yeah, they're white bread sandwiches with some sort of nondescript meat on them. Yep. And the funniest thing, which uh, he does also mention, uh, people have complained to him who've seen this movie. There's four full sandwiches. Why don't they just cut them up? <laughs> Or, you know, um, you could just, I don't know, maybe give everybody yes. one slice of bread. Jeffrey, no one had to die. No <laughs> one had, had to die. die. No one ever had to die. But they're so hungry, though. We've got, the, the, yeah, they're so hungry that they've lost their minds. So we got <laughs> the unhappy losers who, who didn't get anything, you know, pushing their plates away or turning their plates over in, in disgust. Yeah. The, the happy, gloating, uh, sandwich-filled faces of the winners. <laughs> As they scarf them down, yeah. And I, then, I, I really need to do some disgruntled plate flipping myself. Yeah, I dude, feel like that's a... It's just... It says so much. Yeah. Throw my silverware into my cup. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know I'm mad. You've had it. Uh, so we get a title card that says July 16th. And is this the first time we see a date card? Because I don't Yes. We don't, the... we don't see it in the first one. Okay. Now. Thank you. Um, they're about to do this whole thing again. Start up all this bullshit with the, you know, even less food. And that's when the son runs out of the room and grabs his gun, comes back and starts just shooting his family members to death. <laughs> and afterwards, I have to say, mom, who has, yes, who has the thin eyebrows drawn on, she's a bummer. She's feeling the bummed out vibe, bro. <laughs> like she takes the death of three or four of her family members very well. <laughs> <laughs> In stride. Yeah. <laughs> oh i also love that it's like it's one of the sisters is killed the little brother who's like really little it's like the two youngest people and then the other guy at the table um who tries to like tackle him but then gets thrown down and he begs to not be shot in like a little donald duck voice it's very strange <laughs> so weird oh <laughs> One of the girls is wearing a very confusing t-shirt. It says Miracle Strip <laughs> Marching Festival. And I was like, what is a strip marching festival? And I went, oh, Miracle Strip is the name of the place. Marching Festival is the event. But still, Miracle Strip Marching. I mean, you better believe I was immediately eBaying that, trying to find it. Oh my um, god. <laughs> Make your own, dude. I'm telling you. Yeah. You can well, I would, change it. I would change it to say Miracle Whip Marching Festival. Oh, there you go. Just for fun. Well, let's eat, someone says. Uh, Ju July 17th shows up, and uh, Dad's about to ring the bell, and his son just growls at him. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get a series of title cards showing the fate of the fam and what, what happens to everybody. Well, we're so invested in these characters, we really need to know where they are. Did someone make a Living High on the Hog in Witness Protection Program t-shirt? Because I have seen, I, maybe someone just shared a screenshot of that. That was so familiar to me. I mean, yeah, I say it a lot um, just in my uh, my daily parlance. Um, <laughs> As you should. Living high on the hog in the witness protection, which is where both of the parents are now. Yep. Because presumably they squealed on Bubba uh, <laughs> for murdering his sister. Yep. Z or no, I guess just sister at this point. Right. Or is it sisters? I don't know. Whoever's left. Whoever's left, yeah. So when this 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 chilling tale, uh, you know, making an intentional bloody moon reference right there. Once this chilling tale ends, mom says, "That was a strange tale, wasn't it, Bobby? <laughs> <laughs> Did you enjoy it? <laughs> Did you enjoy it?" <laughs> and uh, he starts like uh, you can tell from the empty space on the chair where his heavy ass was that he's bouncing up and down saying yes. Yep. And blowing her hair, her mushroom <laughs> cap. So we know that, yes, he's very happy. I'm going to see my mom this weekend. I'm just going to just make sure I have a fan when I talk to her, just blow her hair around. <laughs> Love you, mom. <laughs> so we get another story, and this is the one about Fred and Ted Johnson. Uh, of course, uh, Fred is the dead one, and Ted is breaking into a funeral home with who I believe is named Oscar. Yeah, there's another guy there, too, though. Yeah, I, I have no idea what yeah. his name is um moby so it's moby uh, is is he's a little prankster they're they're sneaking around in this funeral home uh they find the dead body of of fred johnson and then they go to the basement where uh there's a freaking well at first it's a, a fake out scare where ted disappears and oscar's like where are you where are you and then he comes out and scares him and i'm like 
this movie is amazing. <laughs> it's nothing happened. It's great. But they find what looks like a rotting corpse, which just looks like a lasagna face body <laughs> on a gurney. And then, ha ha, it was Moby pretending to be dead. And he grabs uh, freaking Ted. And Oscar is like, it's like, man, you made me piss myself. <laughs> I got to find a new pair of pants. Oh. Oh, and then they so they steal the body of, of the dead Fred, and they go home, um, and they're celebrating their crime. The first thing I notice is that this beautiful uh, pink couch that uh, that Ted has is wrapped in plastic. Ooh, beautiful! Nothing better, nothing better than protecting your couch. That's right, and but, celebrating with your good friends the thieving of a corpse. But you do it the right way. You do it with your breast mug. Oh, that's what it was? Oh my god, amazing. I was like, is that a Chewbacca mug? What is that? Dude. So, <laughs> Ted, being a classy, classy dude, busts out the, the mug and he's talking about how this is the only way to drink. And it's just this humongous black woman's breast that's a mug. That's ridiculous. Because it's just one breast. So it doesn't yeah. really look like... Why isn't it two breasts? <laughs> Funny story. Um, My dad... Uh, there was actual photographic evidence that is, unfortunately, uh, I have not found it yet in all of our family's uh, photo albums. My dad received a gag present one year, and he got a breast mug. And oh the picture God. is of my dad drinking from the nipple of said brass, uh, brass, of said uh, <laughs> gag gift. And all of these ladies, presumably Tupperware ladies, because that's how my mom rolled. Mm. All laughing hysterically while my dad is drinking from the nipple of this. Of course, his wasn't black because, you know, my father was a horrible racist. <laughs> no. I wish he'd had a black one. That's beautiful. But anyway, so they're drinking and celebrating, but then the celebration of their success turns very serious. When Ted, after right after paying them, Ted warns them, like, if you tell anyone about this, I will come and kill you. And they're like, well, yeah, dude, we're not going to tell anybody. I mean, we also stole the corpse. Yes. Friend. And then, then, Moby asks, what the fuck you want with a dead body for, man? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Well, yeah, do you see, I'm, I'm going to make my brother look silly. Oh, my God. <laughs> this sequence goes through all these emotions, and then they just like, all right, we're going. And Moby and Oscar just leave. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want a dead body for, man? Revenge, man. Don't be kidding. Come on, Oscar. Let's get the fuck up out of here. Fucking right, man. And then it's time to shout at the corpse. Our pal Ted has a long list of complaints oh, about goodness. the bullshit his brother pulled on him while he was alive. And so, oh my god! So important, important details here. The Ted is played by Chester's brother, um, who was a big help in the production of the film. Oh, but nice. here, he says, was not so much a help as an actor. Uh, because he's not very good at it, and it took them about two weeks to film this scene to make it like moderately believable, Holy like the dialogue shit. he was delivering. Yeah, I mean it's it's pretty rough here. He's just he's going through the long the long and tortured story of his relationship with his brother and yep. laughing hysterically the whole time in a very forced way. Oh my god, um, this laugh. It's like a laundry list of things, you know, interspersed between these lips. He keeps saying that like his brother took what was his. He won his father's approval by doing things like getting an A when I got a B. He's like, why are you substaging me by getting better grades? You were belittling me in front of daddy's eyes. Um, and at first I'm like, you know, that's that's kind of just, you know, he's, he's got to take those tests too, you know. Right. Uh, but then then he really jumps in for it. And he's like, well, you also seduced my wife yes. and broke up my marriage for no reason. And it's like, okay, that's definitely worse. And then the, the wife killed herself in shame once he revealed that he didn't actually love her. Yeah. Uh, he, he told her, I yeah. just seduced you because I had to show up my brother. 
And then worst of all, he also cheated Ted out of killing him by having a heart attack. Yep. He found out this perfect crime. He had a poison he's going to use on him and he cheated him of his satisfaction. <laughs> the, the perfect He just discovered that poison existed. And he's oh like, this God. is the perfect crime. So he uncovers the body all the way and he just starts laughing hysterically like, man, I can't bury you naked. I got just the thing. So he goes in the other room and he gets out the clown costume and that fake laugh, the fake laugh and the fake laugh and the fake laugh. He just, he just, I can't stress enough how disarming because he does it so badly and then he does it for a long stretch of this movie. Like this movie is an hour and two minutes. (laughs) I don't even want to know how long this laughter goes on. It's wild. He dresses him up as a clown. The other funny detail he's talking about here in this scene Ooh. is that um, he's really mad that his brother got all of the inheritance money from their father. And instead, instead of he just took it all instead of splitting it with uh, his brother, he went and spent it all on a shrine for himself <laughs> that he was going to be buried in. <laughs> Which, how much inheritance money was this? this? That's insane. bonkers. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, his whole idea is like, I'm going to steal your body so you can't be buried in that shrine and I'm going to dress you like a clown. You're going to be buried in a basement crawl space. Laugh, 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 laugh. So, uh, you know, he goes downstairs laughing and he starts digging in in this, uh, in this basement where someone has spray painted one, two, three, four, five on the wall. Infamous, uh, graffiti artist, the count from Sesame Street. (laughs) Hey, we get some uh, chroma key effects, some very expensive effects here, finally, Mm -hmm. uh, indicating that uh, our pal uh, Fred is returning to his body. Mm -hmm. And uh, then he wakes up and uh, we hear this ominous heartbeat. Boom, 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 boom. And then uh, I wrote in my notes, the clown brother is at the basement door. I had to read that out loud because I could not tell what I said. It's true. We see some very menacing clown shoes walking down the steps. <laughs> I wish he'd squeaked on the way down. Like, wah, wah, wah. That would have been great. <laughs> and in- well, it did, but you just couldn't hear it over the score. Oh yes. <laughs> when uh, when Ted sees his undead brother in the clown suit, he just goes, "Oh shit!" <laughs> and then perfect reaction. Crazy sound effects. So they had the dialogue of our, our undead clown brother here. Um, going through some like vocoder, crazy guitar pedal effects or something. And Mm -hmm. it is insane. My TV was like shaking. It was so (laughs) weird, these sounds. And then I realized, oh, he's talking. Yes, he is indeed talking. Um, You would would never know it. Um, (laughs) It sounds like, it sounds a lot like um, if you, if you tried to like, have a conversation with someone while speaking directly through a fan blade. You know, you ever did like a, yeah. uh, like a, ro- a rotating fan. That's what it sounds like a bit, except way it clips a lot more. <laughs> so he tries to, to, to kill his brother with a hammer the claw side of the hammer doesn't do anything and then he tries to pitchfork him with uh, a, a 2.5 review <laughs> hey come on he got tranched man how did i not make that joke before <laughs> wah, wah, wah. uh but then uh, ted himself gets forked and thrown into the uh, the old grave there this is always happening the pitchforker is always getting pitchforked <sighs> folks get that the proper the- training and Flesh Eater, which we oh, have yeah. not talked about oh, yet. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> Dude, like, just get the proper training. They have the courses. Take the take the pitchfork test. Mm. So that's the end of Ted. And uh, we go back to Mom and she's like, Bobby, that story was strange. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then she tells Bobby that, you know, he wants more stories, but she has she's getting a headache. So she has to go change her glasses. Is that what she says? I mean, that happens. She was maybe, you know what? Those are probably her distance glasses and oh, she was reading with them. Yes. 
That's a novice mistake. You gotta change your glasses. She needs quad-dead glasses. Yep, I have quad-dead lenses, yeah. So, uh... The blue, blue light blockers on my quad-dead lenses. So, <laughs> mine are just those huge wraparound ones that uh, old people buy at Walgreens to fit over their existing glasses. I actually had a pair of those that I found at a, at a thrift store, and the problem with buying something like that is you eventually end up using it for real. So I was driving around the streets of Tampa Bay uh, with uh, in my 1978 Ford Thunderbird and wearing those giant wraparound shades over my glasses. Every, everybody you pass stopped and then oh, there goes the cool guy. Yep. <laughs> yeah, they all wanted my autograph. It was a good time. So... Daryl shows up. There's someone looming around outside. This is Daryl. He walks in and he is very upset that uh, she's reading this Tales from the Quad Dead book. But he's even more upset that um, she's still reading to Bobby, her, and you her know what? invisible ghost son. And, and you know, it's his son too. And we just don't need any of this shit, Daryl. No, I, I like how that part is established after he's really angry that that he's yeah uh, her her dead son's father <laughs> right but yeah then we... he totally grabs the book and beans her with it yeah and they start fighting over just over this whole situation twisting rolling around pulling hair going completely insane fighting and of course our our lovely mom grabs a kitchen knife <laughs> <laughs> and she says, in this struggle, you always give me a hard time. I'll kill you. I'll cut your balls off. Cut your balls off. I will. I will. And then she says, eventually, dance with me. Dance yes. with me. I'm going to be your last dance. Oh, my God. It's it's amazing. This part. She's, this lady had some rage. A Daryl. <laughs> she also at one point tells Bobby to go back to his room and that she'll be there in a minute. <laughs> Very calm at that point. <laughs> Uh, so Bobby leaves, and uh, Mom is still stabbing, and finally uh, Daryl dies. And then Mom is elated and enraged at the same time, and she's bouncing up and down in the kitchen and making the strangest sound. I mean, it's like this weird... It sounds very real. Like, mm. she might have fucking killed that guy. <laughs> oh my god, it's so good. Uh, but then... um. She goes to her room, uh, presumably to you know talk to Bobby or, or go to his room or something. And then, but Daryl's not dead. He's coughing, coughing and sputtering, and he calls nine one one. Mom's in there explaining to Bobby about her dead father, about his dead father now. But they have time for one more story, <laughs> and the police sirens, and then the cops show up. Cops knocking at the door. Sheriff Thompson. Uh, gun in hand. These are the plainest clothes cops. <laughs> these are the uh, the service merchandise cops here. Like these guys are so freaking not uh, authority authority figures. Other than they have guns, <laughs> but he he's at the door, and then another cop comes in through the kitchen window. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, she tries to convince the cops that Bobby isn't dead, that Bobby's real. And then she asks them if she can go to the bathroom. And then she goes to the bathroom and she's talking to Bobby. And she explains to him that they're going to be taking her away. But then she sees the razor blade in the bathroom. And then she deliberates, like, unsure if she should do it. And uh, then she has a montage of memories of, you know, better times with Bobby. And we get a good look at Bobby, you know, when, when he was alive. Yeah, what uh, what really convinces her is the very jaunty tune that starts playing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Beautiful music. Oh. Yeah, they um, you know, they're swinging, they're chasing, they're baseballing, all the all the good things that they used to do. And she's like, I, I want to do those things again. Uh, so she goes all bug eyed. She's playing with the blade on her fingers for a little bit, and yep. then she's like, Nah, you know what, Bobby? She says as the heart beats. <laughs> occur on the score and we zoom in on her eyes and then she slits her own throat right next to the turlet yeah while the cops are waiting patiently outside <laughs> yeah they're like hey you you you, you need help in there 
And then 24 hours later, we got uh, Ghost Mom and Ghost Bobby uh, hanging out. And they say, time to read a story. And we are promised that Tales from the Quad Dead Zone will return. <laughs> the end. Well, I mean, the beautiful thing here is that um, they are both, uh, we see them both now as these uh, ghosts. Yes. Uh, I think Mom is a jaunty yellow ghost. I can't remember Bobby's color here, uh, but they're once again those, uh, the, that funny special effect. I forgot what you called it before. Oh, uh, chroma key. Chroma key, yeah. They're like the chroma key ghosts sitting in their chairs. And um, Bobby's super happy. He's like, you're just like me now, mommy. And, you know, they start telling this story. And uh, very quickly it becomes obvious to us that it is the story that we have just seen. Yes, thank you. story. And, uh, you know, I can just imagine as, as it cuts to the credits, Bobby's like, uh, mom, I think I already know this one. <laughs> Read food for question mark family again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but the, the Tales from the Quad Ed Zone will return uh, gives me chills. Chills. Yes. It's like, oh, I wish. Now, is, is like... he still alive? Is, is Charles? Oh, oh, yeah, he's still alive. So um, it could happen. Yeah. Oh, Chester, I mean, not Charles. Chester. Yeah, Ch- Chester, yes. Chester is alive. I mean, there were rumors he was dead for a long time, but he was not dead. He's still alive. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's like, you know. Uh, we think we think back to when uh, when you would watch an early Kevin Smith film, and at the end it would say Jay and Silent Bob will return, and we're like, "Will they? Will, will they? they?" Yes, and they they did. So so maybe we they we keep will, returning. Yeah, <laughs> they keep returning. So maybe Quad Ed Zone will return as well. Dude, I'm telling you, give this guy an iPhone, he's gonna make a masterpiece. <laughs> He'll be back. The service merchandise catalog. It's like a who's who of famous top quality name brand items at the lowest possible selling prices. Like the Minolta Auto Pack 450E pocket camera at a true special price of $59.97. The 450E is fully automatic and features a built-in lens for close-ups and electronic flash for stop action. The Minolta 450E pocket camera, now only $59.97 at service merchandise. We're changing the way America shops and saving you money. So that is Tales from the Quad Ed Zone. What what have you what other trivias, you know, you said you were gonna check yeah. out some of the special features. Yeah, I have a little bit of information. Um uh for one, uh as I told you before, uh Shirley Latanya Jones, also known as Coot, that's very important. Yes. Um uh, she she uh when asked about what she's been what she's done in the time since these films uh, it was a little vague, although she did reveal that uh, she has been truck driving. So she's a truck driver, nice, uh, which is pretty cool. Chester Turner did have plans to keep making films, but it didn't really make a ton of money. So like right. Devil Doll from Hell, Black, excuse me, Black Devil Doll from Hell. He had a distribution deal for that that he kind of got screwed over on, which is why he distributed this one himself. Um, and why it was so hard to find for such a long time. But, you know, even though they, they sold like, you know, uh, like 800 copies or so, it's really just not, you know, not that much. Uh, he got involved with a woman who had some children and he says he just sort of switched goals and dedicated himself to being like a stepdad and he started a construction business, uh, and just sort of, you know, moved away from, from film is just this little, little point in time in his life. Oh, it's Um, too bad. You know, this is, this is something special. Yeah, I agree. Um, it would be, would be pretty cool to see him try something out now. You do see some cool things here in terms of like, you know, I think uh, some of the special effects he was going for were, you know, pretty ambitious considering. And I would uh, I would very much like to see see him do more. Um, that's just one kid's opinion. <laughs> uh, the other last piece of <laughs> uh, piece of important information is um, in the commentary tracks, which uh, are not very good because it's just Chester and uh coot like sitting around and like mostly not talking but every once in a while talking about something on screen uh chester asks her if she still has those glasses and she responds nah (laughs) nah 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 (laughs) so richard how do you like uh tales from the quad ed zone Uh, i liked it very much i was uh (laughs) i must admit um again as i say every episode now uh taking notes 
uh, while watching these movies uh, is never fun. I'm so, I love just filling up paper, like pausing, rewinding, um, you know, running out of ink, finding a new pen, you know, pausing, rewinding. Uh, but this movie, um, I also paused uh, to look at how much I had left uh, because this is this is a lot of entertainment in an hour. This is like two hours of entertainment packed into an hour. You get you get a, a lot of bang for your buck. This movie is wildly slow, but not unpleasantly so. It's just so it really feels like you're in some kind of a quad dead zone while you're watching it. Um, I love something like this versus, um, and now I'm going to preface this statement. I've never <laughs> seen a film by this gentleman, uh, but I've seen lots of clips and I am not interested. I would rather watch this. And of course, black devil doll from hell before I'd ever sit down and watch something by someone like Neil Breen. Oh, oh, wow. Oh. Now I will not, you know, Neil Breen is creative and he's oh, prolific. Very. Very. Um, but much like Tommy Wiseau, um, he makes my goddamn skin crawl. <laughs> and I literally cannot bring myself. I've never seen The Room. I'm never going to watch The Room. And I highly doubt I will ever watch anything by The Brain Man. Because there's something about the two of them. I think they're related in some... They're from the same planet. <laughs> uh, I just can't stand them. This, mm -hmm. to me, feels like this dude, uh, Chester, is just like a a real dude who's not also dangerously insane. Like, he just seems like an awesome guy, judging by this film, if that makes yeah. sense. No, that's exactly what I got from the documentary. He seems just extremely chill, just like happy to make a movie. I you think he, you know, he takes it seriously, but knows it's kind of, you know, it's a little stupid. Um, he's, he's, a, I think a really level headed fella who got in, did his thing and got out. You got to respect that. I do. I do. I've, I've never made an hour long feature. I've made, uh, some short films and they're, um, wildly hideous. This, this is so much better than anything I've ever made. <laughs> Well, Jeffrey, thank you for picking this. You're very welcome. I wanted uh, us to go out with a, a bang and a whimper. And a and, lot of uh, forced laughter. And some some wind blowing in your hair. Yes. Yes. Ghostly wind. Spirit wind. Much like the, the listeners of this show uh, who are often forced to force laughter out when I make jokes. Mm-hmm. Which they might not even do because I'm not there. They're not, you know, like I'm not watching them <laughs> not laugh at my jokes. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what, folks? I mean, this is the shortest movie we've, we've ever covered. This could be like one of the shortest episodes. Yeah, man. Because I, I thought the first thing I thought of when we were uh, going to do this one, when I saw how long it was, like, oh, we cannot do an episode longer than the movie. This is. <laughs> <laughs> no, not this time. Well, Jeffrey, thank you for picking this, and thanks for hanging out. Yeah, uh, you're welcome. I will now retreat back into the quad dead zone, yep. where I will hang out with uh, the movie Blood Cult, which is my husband. <laughs> oh, my God. I, thought, I figured Sledgehammer was going to be your husband. No, I don't, you know, Sledgehammer's fine, but Blood Cult's the one that really gets me going. Is it, is it Mary Fuck Kill? Are you going to... No, that's distasteful. Mary, 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 Mary them cult. all. <laughs> okay, Mary, them, Mary all. them all. Yeah. <laughs> now, Jeffrey, I'm going to tell you a secret. Um, you know, I actually have a working uh, VHS camera, right? Um, like the one that you actually pop a VHS tape into. Yep. I no do. shit! Wow. Beautiful. Um, do you know about the music video that I shot with it for uh, the classic song by Gyro Jets, Sir Walter Hopechest? I don't think so. I combined my loves of bad subtitles with uh, my love of shot on video things. And the plot of the video is that Sam and I have forgotten. This was before Marky was part of the band. Uh, Sam and I have um, were afraid of our instruments. And our friend Sean is a therapist 
uh, a famous therapist who's teaching us how to love our instruments again. Mm-hmm. And um, what I did was, is I watched what I thought he was saying. I just told him to keep talking to the camera, just keep talking. So I wrote the subtitles based on what it looks like he's saying for the most part. And then after a while, I just gave up and just tried to think of stupider shit to say. But at one point, Sean looks right into the camera and it looks like he said fun shoe. So in the video, he looks right into the camera and goes fun shoe. I'm very proud of that video. Which I'll, I'll, I'll add a link to this on the, uh, it's probably my favorite gyro jets music video. Nice. Yes. But yeah, I'm going to go shoot an hour long feature film of me laughing. To, to fun shoe. You just say <laughs> fun shoe and then you start laughing. <laughs> <laughs> will you, will you force laugh with me? <laughs> Hello, this is the Doom Show is a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. Please check out the other podcasts on legionpodcasts.com. If you'd like more Hello, This is the Doom Show, go to hellodoomshow.podomatic.com or go to doomedmovie.com.